Let's peace these broken pieces together. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. All right. I got my neighbor uh, in today. Um, Ernest Jenkins, the third full name. Yeah, you got to put that third on there. <laughs> you got to put that on there. Now, what, what, did your grandfather call you Junior Junior or what? No, I never met my grandfather. Oh. Never met my grandfather. So my grandfather passed away like the year before I was born. Oh, wow. And uh, my father actually like, <laughs> you know, parents like they, they you know, you, they, I don't know, I guess. You ask the, the kids, ask the parents, do you know when I was born or when you blah, 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 yeah. blah? And my dad was like, yep, I knew exactly when. And it was like, what? And it was like, yeah, it was like right after my dad died. Da, 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 da. It was in December. And it was like, whoa, like, wait, wait. I don't want to know like what month and like, like no, oh, that's too man. much. And October I was born. Dang. I was going to be born sometime in September, but uh, when my grandmother called my mom or my mom called my grandmother or whatever to talk about you know what was going on with the pregnancy uh yeah. my mom was like well i don't feel anything yet da, da, da. and my grandma was like well you got home to my birthday and it was like your birthday is like almost a month away like that's and what happened on her birthday nine o'clock in the morning man I came out dang so your birthday is the same as your mom's my grandmother well, your grandmother's yeah wow. and that was my grandfather's uh, wife Dang. Yeah, so it kind of came that's, back around. That's con- that's a connection, man. Yeah. October, right? Yep, October 10th. 10, October 10th. 10. 10. 10, 10, OVO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, man. So, yeah, as you guys heard a little intro, he gave it himself. Um, I didn't know that about your grandfather, um, but you carry his name yep. proudly. Um, Ernest is my good neighbor here. We've... Um, We've been talking for a while. They they moved in, I think, about a year ago, roughly. 2018. 2018. Yeah. See, this COVID thing got I me know, all right? messed up. The right? time. <laughs> <laughs> we were in and out all the time because at least back then, like, we were always taking trips, you know what yeah. I'm saying, back and forth to L.A., Chicago, New York. Like, we were, we were traveling. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were traveling. And, you know what I mean, even, like, like kind of not necessarily pre-COVID, but, like, yeah. before it really, like, locked down and hit, we were still traveling. We right. went to the DR. We went to Can- uh, Cancun. Like, we was, was oh, out man. and about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and man. then, boom, locked down. It was yeah. like, whoo, glad we got out. So we're working on three years then. Yeah. Three years to be. But but I think we really hit it off, like, just over a year ago. Yeah, just over a year ago. Yeah. Just yeah. over a year ago, man. Um, It's funny because the people who live where you guys live now, I, I told you this story, but for the audience, it was – uh. Like we moved in and they were uh, like we went and gave them like, uh, you know, hey, where are your new neighbors? And they're like, yeah, we're moving <laughs> <laughs> like within a week of us moving in. They moved out. But then uh, what came out of that is now we have you guys as neighbors, which is great. But I know, man. So uh, Ernest uh, is uh, he deals in education. He's an entrepreneur, uh, works in consultancy. And as he worded it. Uh, he do hella shit. <laughs> <laughs> straight up, straight up. But he does it earnestly, which is in his name. So yep, yep. It's spelled like in a dictionary, man. E A R. You know what I mean? That, that's right. Serious minded, serious intent. That's great, man. One thing I'm gonna throw this out there, but it'll, to the surprise of of people watching this, it's uh, I didn't know this man is uh coming up on forty, and uh, <laughs> this whole time. I'm I'm 35. I thought he was at least a year or two younger than me. And then when he told me his age <laughs> by these food trucks near here, he, I was like, "What? I could not believe it." But um, hey man, I wish I had your genes to look young like that. That's great. <laughs> and he's a father of yes, one sir. uh sweet baby boy. He just turned three himself. Yeah. Uh, so how's fatherhood, man? Let's start there. Fatherhood is something that is an ever evolving thing it's an ever evolving role yeah. um i can recall you know just during the pregnancy you know what i mean it's just like wow like okay you know let's make sure we're eating the right way and you know you're kind of caring for two through one person yeah you know what i mean yeah. but then once they're actually there it's just like oh wow like it's like it's real you know what yeah. I'm saying? um 
yeah, you had that cry at birth kind of thing because it's like, wow, man, like I wasn't expecting this, and you know, it's yeah, I don't know, man, it was it was weird at first, um, but it's 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 lovely, you know what I mean? Yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, I wouldn't change it. Um, you know, it is what it is, man. Were you nervous? Was I nervous to be a father? Um, I was, and it was more so in terms of me not having certain things kind of solidified for myself yet. Yeah. Um, as opposed to anything else, you know I what see. I mean? Um, I didn't want to, I wanted to be able to fall back on myself to take care of my son or, you know what I mean? Provide if anything, you know, for the family, whatever the case may be. Um, I didn't want to have to, you know, deal for handouts or, you know what I'm saying? Take less than or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? That's, so, that's that. Well, there's pride in that. Right. And, that's, yeah. and, and, uh, I'm with you. I, I, that's one of my uh, biggest things right now. You know, we're, we're trying to be careful with, when we want the baby, we both want to, uh, to raise a family, of course. Um, but I, I definitely understand that. So, yeah. um, but then when it happened and then, you know, when you're in the hospital and holding a little, Oh baby. man. So that was a trip because he came a month early. Oh yeah. Yeah. He came a month early and, uh, I can remember getting a phone call cause it was a Friday. Um, I think Tiff was about to like go to work uh, or do like something. She had been running around. She had just been doing her thing all day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she called me and was like, "Hey, I gotta go to the hospital because of my uh, my stomach." You know what I mean? Mm. Blah, blah blah. Doctor wanted me to come in, and I was like, "All right." So later on the day, called her, said I'm on the way. You know, come coming out, come out there. Blah, blah blah blah. And she said, "Don't come to the house. Come to the hospital. Like the baby's on the way." Oh, and wow. I'm just like. It's Friday traffic headed to Sacramento. Oh, man. I'm gonna miss the birth of my first child. Like oh, I'm man. never gonna like oh like all these different thoughts <laughs> in my mind. It was just like, but I made it. Um, she held off. I don't know how. You know what I'm saying? But she made it. Um, and he actually didn't come till like uh, that next day, which was that Saturday morning, like sometime early that morning. But that Saturday that he came was the day of one of our baby showers. Oh, wow. It was like the big family baby shower. Yeah. Like a hundred and something people come in on the guest list. Canceled. <laughs> no, space rented already. Oh, my Caterers, God. Caterers, like, it's decorated. Every Like, it's, again, this is the Friday before. <laughs> yes. And it's just like, he's on the way. What? Like. Yeah. So, basically, that day for the, uh, uh, for the baby shower, we just did FaceTime, man, and everybody got to actually, like, Wow. see him and meet him you know what wow. i mean on facetime uh during a baby shower it's even better yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but it was kind of I, I don't know i don't know if i i don't know how do you how you exchange that or what to, or what to exchange yeah. in that scenario yeah because the place was like all did up like it would have been great if we would have actually been able to be there mm. and maybe even great to be there with him right you know what i'm saying right. um but yeah, man, we had to FaceTime that thing. It was crazy. <laughs> you you were FaceTime your own baby the, shower. Own baby shower. You know what I mean? Going yeah. around. I'm just like, oh man, so and so is like, oh wow, they came. Oh, they brought the oh it's like it's, oh. <laughs> you know, that's unique though. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure not many people. It's a first. I've never heard of it before. No, me neither. Never. Me neither. Yeah. Never. Wow. How was your own uh so I know you're from Oakland. Um, East Oakland to be correct. East Oakland to be and, correct. And it's uh, not to be disrespectful. Everyone in Oakland or from Oakland, they would understand the difference when yeah, you're saying yeah. that. Um, you know what I'm saying? Much shout outs to my people in the West. Shout out to my people in the Pole. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Shout there out you to go. people in the deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you can elaborate on this as much as you want or as little as you want. Uh, what was growing up in East Oakland like? Uh it was very unique uh, in terms of it gave you a sense of pride. Uh -huh. um, it challenged you. Uh, it scared you at some points. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, in times you may, you may not have wanted to be scared. I may not have known you were going to be scared. Um, mm. But it was something that was kind of came with like the lay of the land. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, uh, I grew up in, uh, I was born in the early 80s. So, you know what I mean? I grew up the whole crack era was all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Dope era was all, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was part of where I was at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just having those kind of things affect your family in certain ways, mm -hmm. um, indirectly and directly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's wild, you know what I mean? But it toughens you. Um, it was fun uh, because it was like 
something that was just so unique that it wasn't everywhere else, but it was recognized in a lot of different places. Right. When you look at um, the music scene in the West Coast, mm -hmm. um, Oakland was one of those places that was recognized and acknowledged next to L.A. Um, and had some heavy hitting artists like some L like L.A. did. And it was like, wow, like. Yeah. You're not going to get that everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And at the time, uh, it was just a lot of those artists were from East Oakland. Yeah. And it was just like, that's it's even more better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, growing up down the street from the Coliseum, yep. um, the Oakland A's with their, you know what I'm saying? Their, you know, uh, uh, their great history and, yeah. you know, the different things that they did, the championships during that time, mm. uh, having family members that are Hall of Famers and, you know what I mean? What? Uh, having a field named after them, you know what I mean? Hold up. You can't just sneak that in there like <laughs> and not, allow, not tell us. <laughs> That's crazy. So you got family that played baseball. Ricky Henderson's my cousin. No way. Yeah. That's great, man. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Many summer days uh, at, at my aunt's house, swimming yeah. in the pool and, you know wow. what I mean, just hanging out and. That's yeah, cool, man. All that kind of stuff. That's um, cool. That's, yeah, going that's... to the games, growing up, and standing on top of the dugouts, and wow, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, but having those kind of different things, you know what I mean? The Golden State Warriors with the Run TMC era during that time. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Raiders even coming back, and oh, yeah. you know what I mean. So you had all of that stuff just right there. Literally, I can look down the street, stand in the middle of my block and look down the street and I can see the Coliseum. I can see all this stuff going on. Wow. When the A's were winning, had a fireworks shooting off. If we didn't go to the game, you can see it right there. Like, you were in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and also, too, it was also just the area of the sideshow. I grew up by Eastmont Mall and that was just a, a place where they had a lot of sideshows. Eastmont Mall, Haven Score, Bancroft, uh, Foothill, that whole like little area over there was just... Yeah. Popular, you know what I mean? It's like a car show, you know what I mean? Man. That's pretty much what it was, a mobile car show. People riding the strips back and forth, um, people doing donuts in their car, doing, <laughs> yeah. like, that's what it was. And so having, you know, the basketball and the sports stuff down the street, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Having, you know, the kind of car show stuff and, you know, just the neighborhood kind of turf stuff, yeah. it kind of pulled you that direction. It right. was like, I want to be somebody that's on a scene, that's that's known, that's yeah. like, you know, has some kind of notoriety or whatever. You know what I mean? Even if I'm a local guy, I want that local notoriety. Yeah. Um, and I want it to be genuine. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that was something that's something that you grew up with. Uh, in Oakland. You got into sports? Yeah, I got you, into sports a little bit. Yeah. I played uh, soccer growing up uh, immediately. That was one of the first sports that I, that I was playing. Um, and then uh, tried baseball after that. That didn't, that was okay, but it didn't really work well with me matriculating. Yeah. Uh, tried out for the basketball team, but wasn't focused on it like that. Mm -hmm. I was going to try out for football, but I missed the tryouts and uh. just never tried again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but maybe always, that's better with, with all this stories we're hearing. Well, about I, I felt I would have been a dope wide receiver. You would have. You know what I, I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I just felt I would have been a dope wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, other than that, that was, that was kind of it, man. That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, uh, did, did you like having having family that were in the pro leagues, right, in the baseball and uh, with the A's and everything? And um, did you look at that as, hey, maybe that that could be my avenue? I did, and yeah. that's one reason why baseball was kind of something like, you know, let's look at this, let's kind of get into this. But again, when I didn't like matriculate and yeah. stuff, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah, let's find did, something else to do. What was your backup plan for that? Or just in general, like when you were going through the sports, soccer, baseball, and, and I really didn't have a plan. No, it was just like let's play sports. Let's just play sports. Yep. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. I was, I guess you could say, growing up, uh, my parents made sure I was kind of one of those kids that didn't have to worry about. You know what I mean? A lot of the the, the bullshit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, a lot yeah. of just the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate that. You know what I mean? But I still wasn't protected from it yeah. you know what i mean yeah. because my family still had hardships you yeah. know what i mean whether it was financial whatever case with me like i can remember my mom being laid off of work and now we can't get as many school clothes and as many shoes and everything mm -hmm. like it's like okay well what can i do to try to put some money on the table what can i do to try to you know what i'm saying yeah. support myself so even with things like that it was like i wasn't nobody's fully protected yeah. you know what i mean yeah. uh martin lawrence had a great quote and he said he said no one's immune from the trials of tribulation in life Mm. And it's like that makes perfect sense. Nobody mm. is, you know what I mean. We're mm. all going through something at one point or another, or we're coming out of something. So that's true. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was good. I liked it though. My block was pretty picturesque, um, in terms of some of the other blocks around us. Yeah, I'm gonna say it like that. Um, everybody on the block knew everybody. Uh, not too much 
not too much gun violence growing up on the block until I was really like older. Mm. Um, but we still had people on the block that, you know, handled legal business, but they still did it in a respectable way. I see. That it didn't disrupt the family life of the block, if I that see. makes sense. I if see. that makes sense. There were certain lines they wouldn't cross. Yeah, it yeah. was it was respect to how they handled their business. Mm. You know what I mean? It was integrity level and some class of how they handled their business. That's good. Um, and I mean, even with that, like, you take that away. Yeah. Because one thing that we did growing up, it was like, all right, if we're going to get in some trouble, we're not getting in trouble on our block. Uh, we're not bringing trouble back to our block. Yeah. Because we don't have anywhere else to go. Oh, yeah. Now, if we go somewhere else to get in trouble, I mean, shit, that's different. Wow. Whatever. Yeah, that's different. But we're not coming back here with it. We're not making that it's going to follow us back mm -hmm. here with it, if, we, if anything. So You you, you guys had r rules to the, to the game. It was yeah. Rules to the game. Yeah. That's something that we were taught. That's great. I mean, it's that's part of the whole learning the 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 rules of the block and then the other blocks and i'm assuming we we're talking about well, it it transcends it transcends the block yeah because i mean it's rules to the game when it comes to when it comes to business yeah yeah if i'm making a proposal to coca-cola i just can't say hey coca-cola look at this i got an idea yeah no, i have to have it written up formally mm -hmm. i have to do my research i have right. to know who i'm you know what i mean right all that stuff has to be in place right. if i'm sitting down in a business meeting check it out how i how you do business in the u.s well you're going to sit at one end. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sit at another mm -hmm. end. I'm going to be there with my people. You with your people. Yep. That's it. Yep. But say we go to China and do business. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to be right there. You're going to be right there. But my number two guy is going to be sitting next to you. Wow. And your number two guy is going to be sitting next to me. Different. So that way, if you're trying to pass any kind of signals, or something, I mean, what? Yeah, yeah. What the hell are you looking at him like that for? Right. What? what so there's like tr there's like different levels of trust exactly. in different cultures. R rules yeah. of the game. Yeah, rules of the game. Rules of the game. That's you true. know what I mean? Yeah. The, the the nature of the game is to win, but there's different rules in how you're going to win and where you're playing at and what type of game you're playing. Man. And and you brought up business. Um, that's one thing I wanted to talk about because you mentioned some to me uh, about a few months back, and that's what intrigued me in, in wanting you to be on here. Um it's re relating to music, which is my passion. And you said, I want to talk to you about how jazz and the economy <laughs> are, uh, <laughs> are related. And we can, we can sprinkle in your, your, your absolutely, grown, absolutely. growing up and, 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 and how you even got interested in business and, and economy. And uh, business was early off for me, man. Um, <laughs> Okay. I was doing business when I was in elementary school, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was taking stuff to school, selling it when I was in elementary school. <laughs> I, I, I can relate to that. I can relate to that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I had kids coming to look for me at my house, man, and I might not even be at home. I might be staying with my cousin in Berkeley or Hayward or something like that, and they're like, hey, um, can we – is Ernest here? No. Uh, do you know he's going to be back? He's not. He's – what do you what, what do you need? <laughs> yeah. Well, we want to buy some sodas and some other stuff and blah 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 blah. This is like, wait, what? And <laughs> like what? He sells it to us when we come back there. Like, oh my, the kids running the shop out the backyard. Like, while we playing basketball. So, yeah, yeah, man, I've been doing business a, a long time. Let uh, me ask you this: the the your intrigue with business and what you mentioned earlier about you wanted notoriety. Yeah, were they connected by in any means? Yes. Um, uh, yeah, uh, for me, one of the things that I wanted to do growing up, uh, you know, like a lot of people, uh, we want to play basketball. Yeah. Didn't necessarily work out. Sports didn't work out. Mm -hmm. So my next thing was, all right, we're going to be a rapper. We're going to yeah. do music. Yeah. Didn't work out. And the final thing was, well, I didn't run some businesses, try to try to own businesses. Yeah. And I expected, you know, foolish me with the American dream that, hey, I'm going to graduate high school and going to be next step is college and blah, blah, blah. I and mean, boom, I'm going to be in business and have my own business by the time I'm 25. And uh, it didn't really work out like that. Uh -huh. um, you know what I mean? I expected to, to own a conglomerate, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. by this age, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, but it just didn't matriculate like that. Uh, I wasn't groomed in that kind of way mm -hmm. um, and wasn't shuttled into college uh, and into higher education that kind of way. Yeah. You know what I mean? College is just high school without no rules. That's all that shit was. <laughs> <laughs> Did that, uh, the process of going through those goals and, and for whatever reason, them not pa spanning or panning out and then you go to the next one and you went to the next one, like you said, mm -hmm. um, how did that affect you mentally? Did did it make you jaded? Were you? Yeah, it did because I felt like the I felt like once I got to kind of the end of a road, like that was the end of the road. Mm. 
Um, and where I came to that point, uh, I was working at UPS and um, I was going out for a driver's position. I was trying out for a driver's yeah. position. And I told myself, I was like, before, before I take this test, I say, like, okay, if I pass this test, I'm just not going back to school. I'm going to do this UPS driver shit. It's going to be what I do the rest of my life. Be a driver. Cool. Right? If I don't pass the test, though, go back to school and finish. Mm. But that finish. However long it take, finish. Yeah. Because this shit ain't for you. Yeah. And I can remember, you know, my me and my older brother, he took me out and we did some practice driving. And some one of his friends, he bought their car. And it was a stick shift because the truck is a stick shift. Yeah. So, we bought the car just so we can practice some stick shift driving or whatever, make sure I was good on that stuff. I got in that truck. I was knocking them gears down. I was doing fabulous, right? Yeah. They had me go park on this hill and uh, parked on the hill. I was all good. And the lady was like, all right, now you can pull off and go back to the yard now. So, okay, cool. We never practiced pulling off on the hill in the stick shift. Oh. <laughs> so what happened? <laughs> what you think happened? <laughs> <laughs> fucking truck rolled back and rolled on the curb. Oh, God. Now, I stopped it. I didn't hit nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a very hard stop. I didn't hit nothing. But the lady was like, oh, no. Like, you can't pull off from a hill. Like, I'm not. I'm, yeah. I can't pass you. Like, you're not going to be able to pass. Oh, my God. And so she gets in the driver's seat. Right. <laughs> so pause that film. Right. Pause that <laughs> footage. Right. Roll it back. The whole time I'm driving. Right. Doing this test stuff. We're just talking, having great conversations. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're driving, you're going to have to look out for this. Like she's giving me little things like little tips and hints yeah. the whole way. Yeah. We get to this hill shit and she <laughs> doesn't tell me no tips or no nothing like that. She jumps in the driver's seat after she fails me oh. and says, if you leave the parking brake on when you're pulling off, you won't roll back. Afterwards. Afterwards. And then pulls off and goes, ah. <laughs> I said, well, it's not for me then. Yeah. It's not for me to deliver these packages in this <laughs> little brown truck with the little brown shorts. <laughs> my little brown skinny legs. It ain't for me. <laughs> so so you you real so this was this was it. But but you had the foresight going in to have that, that was, option. It, it was, that yeah, second it was option. the backup plan. Yeah. It was the option. It was like, right. man, if this don't work, man, and finish the school shit. Yeah, yeah but in the beginning we talked, you said you really didn't didn't think backup plans, yeah. but you had to get, get to a point where you realized I need to have something else. In case. So that was a maturity thing that, yeah. that you had to go through yeah. from the previous attempts. Yeah. <clears throat> so now you're, you're just, so now you're saying, well, shit, I'm going to school. Yeah. I uh, yeah. finished up, man, went back, um, ended up transferring to San Francisco state, um, and ended up taking a little bit of a while to get through San Francisco state. The major I was in was an impacted major. Um, which but, was what? Uh, international business. International business. Okay. Yeah. Why um, was it impacted? Just too, too many students in the program. Mm. So, yeah, not enough space for all the students. That's all. It just took too long to get through the I line. See. That's I all see. it really was. It's like a new ride at Great America or something like that, man. You know what I mean? A Six Flags. <laughs> you go, you're in line for four hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's for this two minutes of screaming and, ah! Right. Four hour wait. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you like, all right. What got you through those waiting times? Shit, man. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I didn't really get through the waiting times, man. I ended up uh, dropping out or flunking out a little bit, man. I was on academic probation and oh, didn't get back in. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, some work became available, and that's yeah. when I went to work. You know what I'm saying? I was at the time, at the time, and at, at that point in my life, a lot of people of my age were starting to make those professional wages mm -hmm. and starting out in those, you know, those kind of good entry level jobs or whatever. And it was like, man, like I can't keep, you know, what I'm saying making these these half dollars while they making whole dollars yeah. like nah man you know what i'm saying you so wanted more i wanted more yeah. so i went ahead and you know what i'm saying went that way to work for a little while man. yeah and that's what i've been doing like the past eight nine years i years, see you know what i'm saying and this past uh fall yeah this past fall um i want to say i went ahead and was able to uh get back in to san francisco state um uh, through like the college of extended learning, man, and got it, got in with a great GPA, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 3.0 and from there killed it in the winter, you know what I'm saying? Uh, killed it in the spring. Um, and here I am now, man, I graduated and I'm doing the last few classes. Well, I did the commencement ceremony, but I'm doing the last one or two little dipsy do classes, man, and just finish things up, put a bow on it. It's great, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's it. Obviously, it was important enough because you're you're doing business already, mm -hmm. right? So that paper 
is is what what does that um mean to you now that you got that man it's i it's, it represents power mm. and, and a sense of freedom you know mm. what i mean um the job offers that I'm getting now, you know what I mean, is yeah. a lot different. You mm. know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, the job offers with power. The job offers, you know what I mean, where I can call a play, so to speak. You know what I mean, where I have power to make decisions. Yeah. When before it wasn't really like that. You know what I mean. Yeah. So um, that was, I, yeah. I, I don't really know. It's it's hard to describe. It, yeah. It's hard to describe. Uh, I feel um, I feel better about it as a father. Let me see. It, it makes me feel more relieved and secure as a father. Yeah. Because it's like I know I can go get something that's gonna like really be like something that I can you know build on and pass on to my son if need be. You know, what there I mean? you have go. something I can really make something with and put something away. So. And then uh, that was, I mean, you know, the your your child must has to be like that mo extra motivation to get you, that for you to have gone back and gotten that paper. I yeah. mean, it, it it all makes sense and. And uh, good on you, man, that to, to do that and, and get that all. And, and obviously you could have had, you could still have success. I'm not saying like schooling is the only route. It helps. Mm -hmm. It helps tremendously, especially for a family, um, you know, and, and. Well, it's just what it is now, man. You got to have some kind of paperwork or some kind of something to prove what you've done. The rules of the game. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's simply all it is, yeah. man. You got to have receipts. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You know, you know, that's really what it is. Um. And I mean, even if it's a certification for being a, a pipe fitter, all right, cool. Yeah. But you still have to go to class to get that certification. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and yeah. How do you deal with the politics of, of running businesses or pitching businesses? I don't, I don't really, I don't know what I do more so in business is more so consultancy. Okay. And the politics of it i don't really deal with oh yeah that's because true. it's kind of like this is your business i'm here to help you i'm here to like mm. I'm, I'm here to do a job for you i'm mm. here to, so i'm here to serve you mm. so i don't really deal with the politics of it like that the politics may come within the parameters i can operate i see you know what i, I mean see. and those things might be some real tangible things you know mm. politics of a low budget Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Politics of you asking me to climb a mountain in two days. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the fucking helicopter at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I get up there. All right, cool. Where are you going to drop me off at? <laughs> right. Because if I got to start from here and right. get up Kilimanjaro in two days, I, no, 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 no. I got you. You know what I mean? So those are like the, re it's the real, those real tangible pieces. Other than that, man, you know, I dealt with politics with, with an education, you know, and that side of it. And that's like, that's shitty. Yeah. Because... <laughs> <laughs> no one forces you to get into no one forces anybody to get a job mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. they don't say you put a gun in your head you got you have to be a teacher yeah no you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah 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 you chose to take that interview mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. chose to sign that contract you chose to take them classes to get in this profession let's, let's right. just start there yeah let's start there yeah. you made the decision early off to say i want to do this mm -hmm. and in doing that you get in there and now you see that the rules of the game have changed because people are in there and they say they're there for the kids. They ain't there for the kids. Mm. They're, not, they're not there for all the kids. You no. know what I mean? They may be there for the kids that look like them. They may I be see. there for the kids that, that, that operate within a certain or, or labeled a certain range, uh, uh, SPED or, you know what I mean, whatever the case, SPED or special education yeah. or whatever the case may be. But other than that, like, you ain't there for all the, all the kids. You know what I mean? Were you, uh, did you have like specific, uh, sour experiences when, for example, I don't know, like with the counselors perhaps, or with, yeah, within the, within the classes themselves or, uh, I only had like maybe one bad incident in class, okay. uh, a student, <laughs> 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 I'm laughing because we were going back and the student came in, you know, debating about a tattoo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is it cool to get a tattoo of, yeah. you know, somebody's name on you? I'm just like, ah, I mean, it stuff don't really work out like that. Blah, blah, blah. Based on my, I'm telling based on my experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard that stuff working out like that before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah, right? So he kind of challenged it. We're going back and forth a little bit. And I guess I actually touched the nerve because, uh, I believe he said that one of his parents had the other uh, the other parents' name tattooed on him, mm. but they weren't together. Oh. So that spoke. That was my case and my point right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was right 
it was to the heart with, with mm-hmm. him. And it was just like, man, like, uh, oh, like he yeah, got yeah. mad. And so he didn't want me to talk about it with him anymore. I see. So I didn't, I didn't talk about it with him anymore. Yeah. But I kept talking about tattoos and that whole concept with another student that was in the room. Right. And he got, he got upset that I was still talking about it. He felt like I even was even though it's not with him. It's yeah. yeah. And yeah. so, you know, even after me explaining, like, you know, dude, like, why are you getting mad? Blah, blah, blah. blah yeah. You know what I'm saying? He went off on me. He was, it was on my birthday. He was oh like, man, fuck God. you. It ain't your birthday. And walked out the room. <laughs> and it was like, it was so funny how he just did it. Like, I just couldn't help but laugh. But that's, that's, I mean, anybody with, you know, an ounce of logic looking at that can see that, you know, it's, you didn't do anything wrong. You, you did what he asked. You stop talking to him about it. Mm-hmm. He can't control who you're talking to outside of Or that. what I'm talking about. Or what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so. and I mean, you know. And this that, is in, in college. Nah, this is in, in class with me being a teacher. And, oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Um, and so. So how did you handle that as a, being, I, being I a student? I, I couldn't let him stay in the class. And right. not that, I mean, again, he walked out that right then after he said he walked out. But in terms of him coming back to the class or whatever, he didn't want to, he couldn't come back. I wouldn't let him come back. Yeah. Like if you, I told him if you come back, like you need to apologize. Like of course. it's like, yeah. because you disrespected myself, you disrespected your classmates. Like I, again, I explained, like I wasn't talking to you. Yeah. I was talking to this other person right. in the room. And right. again, if that upset you, man, you had all rights to walk out whenever you wanted to walk out, but you can't tell me what I can and cannot talk about. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, and I told him that's all he had to do was apologize to me. And you know what I'm saying? It was all good. He never apologized. Yeah. But I still helped him out when he, you know, told him if you need any kind of support or anything like that when it comes to trying to graduate or anything else like that, I'd be there to help him. There you go. Yeah. yeah so. you, you, you rose above it. Yeah. Uh, but no, that, I mean, because there, then there's a, I, I'm a teacher too, as you know. So I, I teach private lessons and I t- teach at a private school. But that uh, idea of student to teacher, it's so important, mm-hmm. you know, because you know, the same, the inmates can't run the asylum, right? They, they, <laughs> there's a, there's a reason they have that saying, I'm not comparing students to inmates, but I'm saying there is a reason there's a teacher and there's students learning. It's a structure. Keyword learning. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you're disrupting the learning by, uh, disrespecting the teacher or anybody in the classroom now, the focus of everybody else isn't on the subject at hand. Mm -hmm. It's on, Oh, what's going to happen with it. And it just becomes a whole side mess that, that, and then you handled it really well. You, you let them walk out. You didn't let them back in to make a statement. And that's how I take that is you, that was a statement to the rest of the class. Like I will not be disrespected in my own classroom (laughs) and, and good on you to, to, to do that. Cause not all te- I know teachers that can't handle that. I've seen it growing up, right? I grew up in Maryland, but so Baltimore and Maryland, you know, so there's some similarities as mm-hmm. far as culture in, yeah. in these. They call it body mo murder land. <laughs> Come on, man. The wire. Come on, man. I know about that stuff. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, there's some stories I witnessed, but I didn't live in Baltimore proper, but I lived in uh, a city called. Uh, Gaithersburg mm-hmm. in Montgomery Village, which is about an hour away. Um, but the area I grew up in, it, we had similar. On the last day of school, uh, I walk into the, there was this middle like uh, corridor in the middle of our high school. Mm-hmm. I just walked to my class, and one of the kids I knew, constantly, he's like, I had a good friend back then. Uh, he goes, Hey, your friend is getting his ass whooped right now. And I was like, and, and this was a normal thing, by the right, way, in my right, school. Like, right. This was not like a big deal. But then when I saw who he was getting his ass kicked from, I was like, oh my God, like, what did he do? And he had a, he had a mouth on him. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't be too mad. Like I couldn't right, be like, right. I was like, bro, like, dude, you could have brought, you really probably brought this on yourself. Yep. Yep. But, but again, how to teach, how the teachers and the faculties handled that was just piss poor, mm-hmm. you know, like. They just would, they were suspending people that weren't even involved. Like it yeah. was very, it was, it was not investigated at all. It was just like a blanket. All right. Everybody in this room is yeah, gone. Yeah. I was like, that kid wasn't even involved. Right. right? Like he's just reading a book. In right. The, the, like, quiet, the quiet one in the corner that don't <laughs> ever do nothing. Yeah. So, 
it's important how it's handled is what I'm trying to say. And, and, and I, I'm, and I applaud you for handling that the way you did. Um, and not, not, uh, letting just emotions get the best. You, you, you realized that person's role, your role and, and what needs to be done in that moment. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, so business consultant, um, how, do, how does that work exactly? So you, you, I mean, I know it in, you know, the basics, but, uh, for the audience. So like do small businesses or, or any size business, do they contact you for how does it work exactly as far as uh, they may contact me? I may contact them. Uh, usually it's somebody I may already know that's trying to do some business or has a business going on. So connections. Yeah. To connections. Start. Yeah. 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 My, my three ends are network, navigate, negotiate. Hmm. You know what I mean? Use your network to where you're able to navigate to the point you want to be at. And once you're able to get to that point, yeah. start negotiating your price. Gotcha. Network, navigate, negotiate. And you're you're basically helping them build their business or... or your- build it out, uh, rebranding yeah. or branding. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, restructuring. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is they're trying to do. I'm just trying to help them do that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just trying to help them complete the job. That's really all it yeah, is. I may need to negotiate with you, man. I got <laughs> to get this podcast off the ground, you know. <laughs> this is episode 15 and, and you know, um, I'm still a baby in the game, but um, that's it's crucial to have someone that that is is educated in 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 the field that uh, um of the blanket statement business but um n- knowing your story of of you know you you're you're well versed in music you're well versed you told me your your father was a musician is a musician he plays the bass he's not necessarily a musician but it's something that he picked up uh over the last maybe 9 or 10 years or more okay um yeah. he had to get some spinal surgery um, on his uh, on his neck. How did, why? What happened? He had a degenerating disc in his neck from uh, the type of work that he was doing. Didn't, oh, you know, and they didn't have the right kind of equipment in there. Oh wow! So yeah, then he, yeah, nothing that was ergonomically, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. is now. So <clears throat> over the years, he's just doing that same job. It started degenerating the disc in his neck, and uh, it's causing him a whole lot of pain. Mm. And so he had to get some surgery on his neck, and, you know, spinal surgery, and get that stuff straightened yeah. out, or whatever the case may be. And during that time, he was just like couldn't really do nothing, and you know, yeah, he was just kind of at home and picked, was, picked yeah, up the bass. Like I need something to do, and yeah. he picked up the bass. And, yeah. yeah, but you, but you, you said you you were into music too growing yeah, up. Yeah, I was uh, doing a lot of rapping and just writing and stuff like that. Mainly like writing for rapping. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. uh, me and one of my best friends, uh, Jamal, we would come to the house after school. Supposed to be doing homework, and we. <laughs> trying to make music you know what i'm saying <laughs> i mean it was a passion there right so, yeah, yeah yeah you yeah, know that, what i mean I, I catch myself every now and then still writing something down you know what i mean yeah. um but no nah, man music is just it's just there you so know? yeah and that that's why I, want, I was saying you know i feel like we can we can help each other out mostly you helping me out because uh, you you got the you got the ends with the business side and um, for me, the biggest challenge with the whole podcasting is, is marketing, like how, how I can get that out. Right. There, you know? Right. Well, I mean, that's, that kind of goes back to the question that you asked me earlier with music and business. Like how do they kind of move together? Yeah. How do you see them and happening? You, like yeah. That? You mentioned jazz. So. And so yeah. where I got that concept from was, uh, one of my professors, um, at San Francisco state, we had an assignment where, uh, we had to look at jazz and business management. Okay. And how business managers, some of the best business managers are kind of like jazz musicians. You know what I mean? Um, mm. Being that, you you know, if we're playing in a jazz band, you know, we might have somebody on bass, you know, somebody on, you know, the big, <laughs> right? They own all that kind of stuff, right? Somebody on the horns, right? somebody on the piano, you know what I mean? We may even have somebody kind of singing scat, you know what I mean? Okay. Right? Yeah. All that kind of stuff, right? And now with all this happening, who takes the lead? Mm. Now, we're all moving in unison based on what's on the paper, based on the notes, based on how the song is written, based on how it's composed. Mm-hmm. But what about those parts we kind of freestyle and do our own thing? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Is the show going to be the same time every time we play? We play we play in Baltimore. It's one way. We play in Oakland. It's another right. way. We play in New York. It's a different. It's, yeah. But we're still playing the same song. I see. You know what I mean? How you present it matters. How you present it matters. Uh, speaking to the audience. Because uh-huh. you may have an audience that's just really more into the horns. And maybe the guy that's on the horns is really on fire. So you know what? We're going to step back and let you have the solo part. Mm. You know what I mean? We're going to let you have a little bit more time in mm-hmm. that. As opposed to what we normally would do. I see. You know what I mean? Maybe the drum guy is not the, not the drum guy we normally have. So instead of giving uh, him that solo piece, we're going to let the piano man step up and do some, th- and do some things. I see. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, it, I'm trying to connect that with the business side. So and, when it comes yeah. to management, you know what I mean? Well, maybe, you know, you, you got to come in and do the same job every day, right? Yeah. Uh, let's take a store like The Gap, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got to come in. We got to sell the jeans. We got to sell the jacket, the khakis yeah. and all this shit, yeah. right? We got to do this shit every day, yeah. right? Well, maybe it's summertime coming up. Are we going to sell as many khakis as jeans? Mm. No, mm. Right, 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 right. It's more youth out there that's looking for summer employment. Uh, yeah. So now as a manager, how do I handle that? Yeah. You know what I mean? How am I, how am I uh, 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 setting up the displays in my store? Mm -hmm. Because if it's summertime, I want all my shorts and shit up front. Yeah, yeah. Put the jeans and shit to the back. Yeah. It's good that we still have them. People might need them. Mm -hmm. They still might need these khakis and this other shit. Mm -hmm. But the short pants is what's hot and is what's going on right yeah, now. Yeah. Put that to the front. Right. Put that up in the window. Yeah. Now, if I come in doing the same job, pushing jeans, well, now them shorts are sitting there. They're going to be more so in the back of the store, the middle of the store. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to sell as much. Our volume's going to go down. Mm -hmm. We might have to lose. We can't hire as many youth for the summer because we're not pushing as much volume. Our number's not that good. Yeah. But if I'm moving with the, you know, like I said, if the Baltimore is running a certain kind of way and I'm adjusting short of Baltimore, well, now I'm going to sell more tickets in Baltimore. Yeah, right, right. Now right. I can hold more shows in Baltimore. Yeah, I think the word I've learned in relation to this is, is, is find your niche. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and on the digital side, because it's uh, it you know, with the retail store, you 100 percent, you're dead on with that. But with like, for example, my YouTube channel, every video I watch, 90 percent of them say the ones that are successful, like I found my niche. And, and that is where I'm right now trying to figure that out. Right. Because mm -hmm. when I initially started this thing and, and and it's still there, like the whole thing, my whole passion for this was. I want to learn about people, right? And I want to learn about them specifically. And I, and the umbrella goal over that is togetherness, right? With all this shit going on right now out here in the world, like it's everything's opposite of that, right? And it just, it never made sense to me. And I, I figured, why don't I use my, my platform? Like if you I, see me smiling, it's cause my, it's, it's, it, it's rotating. Gears yeah, are rotating. Yeah. Gears are rotating. And, and I don't I don't want to give it away, just I don't wanna <laughs> we're gonna have to sit down and have a talk. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Talk, absolutely. Yeah, I, I see I see I think I see your niche. You I, you I, already I, see I it. I think I see your niche. Yes, yeah. I do. I think because and when I say I see it, I see where you're going. Yeah. I see what you're reaching for. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessarily that far away. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um you've actually you're touching on it. You just don't really know that is that what you're touching. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, yeah. what, because where I have trouble with the word niche is that that means it's, it's a one, it's a one trick pony. It's partial. Yeah. You see? So then I'm like, so that's where I, I, my, my challenge right now, and you can help me with this is that how do I feel comfortable with that one partial audience? Right? Like I, I like I like to learn about old, young, mid age. Well, don't think of it as don't think of it as I, I'm gonna give you this one. Don't think of it as you just parting up with one audience. Mm. Think of it as this is what I do. Like, for instance, you have an Apple computer. Yeah. Apple delivers its platform pretty much the same way. Yep. Every time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is that their niche? Might not be. I see. But the delivery that they have is what's consistent. Uh, that's what keeps bringing it back. That platform, that interface, that, that's what keeps people coming back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even when it comes to, and I kind of had this debate in, in class the other day, uh, when it comes to, because the stakeholders, right? You're a stakeholder because you're a consumer. You buy the product. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But the, the key stakeholder in the swing, the audience left or right, yeah. is the app developers when it comes to these things. Mm. Apple knows this, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Android uh, platforms know this. And the reason why uh, it's the app developers because if you have an app that's like super, like it's the thing, whoever you give those exclusive rights to, now they platform is the only one that, that has access. I see. Which brings more people to using that platform. Now it doesn't mean that Apple is switching up. Oh, we have, you know, 100,000 new customers that want this thing on here. We're, we're gonna switch up because of that, no. They're just going to make that optional. Gotcha. They're going to put that option there. But we're still going to deliver the same way each time. Mm. And so that's my message and, 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 and my uh, what I want to be out there, don't mess with that. Yeah, don't, yeah. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't divert from that. Right. 
That's your, that's your, that's who you, that's your brand. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. That's your product. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. You're the only one trying to do that. Right. That, that's what that is. Yeah. Now everything else around that, are, you know, eh. that's the part again. See, for me, politics, we talked about politics. When that stuff starts to sprinkle in, it's politics. I know it's, it's politics. politics. <laughs> it's politics. I haven't I'm heard a, that before. I'm gonna tell you, like one of my OG homies told me, man, don't be fooled. Uh, uh, he said you gotta watch the abracadabra. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Don't be fooled by the hocus pocus. Okay, I see. It's abracadabra yeah. out here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The shit ain't. Shit is not hocus pocus. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. It seems like it's a magic trick, but the shit ain't no trick. Right. You know what I mean? Right. It's just a formula to how you do it. That's it. You know what I yeah. mean? And when it said we could talk about that niche, mm -hmm. they what they found is a formula for them that works mm -hmm. for them doing what they want to do best mm -hmm. or doing what that one thing is that nobody else is doing. Yeah. They just found a formula that works for them to get that done yep. in an efficient or proficient kind of way. You know what I mean? I gives them the comparative. We're talking business. Gives them the comparative advantage. Yeah. You know what I mean? They can produce the product better or cheaper than the competition. Man, okay, yeah, it's yeah, or produce a better product than the competition, yeah, 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 that's that's true. And and yeah, for me, it's just remem remembering why I started it that You're helps why. so much because when I remember that, and, and not that I've forgotten, I mean, I'm only 15 episodes in, it's not like it was that long ago, but um, I'm starting like the every week with every episode. There's like a whole ocean of information that I'm learning, right? Mm -hmm. And um, balance the balance part. And my, my wife, when she if she's here, she would agree. Like the balancing game of, of doing this, because when I, I know I'm an extremist, like I can be, I can d delve into something, mm -hmm. and then I'm gone for like a month. Like I'm just that's all I'm doing. And it's cool if it's just me by myself, but you know I exactly. have a wife. I exactly. got you know I got. I got uh, animals, as you can see all around, but like I got people who depend on me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so learning how to let go, like I get so hungry for like, oh, I need to go do this. And then it's all up here bro, at the end of the day. So um, I, I, that's the part I need to manage better because everything else, like you said, it's a formula. It, and and I'm getting it. I'm 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 close, right? I'm I'm and uh, and whether I'm close or not, because when I started this, I was like, I'm gonna do this whether it, it blows up or not, mm -hmm. because the, the reality of it is, I did it because I actually genuinely wanted to learn about people, mm -hmm. right? Hence why I wanted you on. Hence why I have people on here from Tennessee. I've had people on from all over, mm -hmm. right? So, um, it's it's uh, obviously I start with people I know, and then the if it gets to a point where I can get people here that I don't know, that's even better. Cause I got more to learn. Right. So, um, but yeah, man, it's, it's just the rules of the game. Like we've been talking about, that's the theme. So, uh, well, you found the form, you found the formula for success in the other areas. My suggestion is whatever that formula is or whatever those formulas are of success, you need to take pieces of that formula to try to transfer them over to the other area. Like you said, the time management piece for you is like something that's like you can just dive in and just lose track of Yeah. That. Build a formula for yourself for that. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's all it is. Just build a something formula Something as yourself. easy as just reminders. That's I, it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I found oh, I found having an old school, like, real actual calendar I can look at on uh, the wall. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That much more organized. No, I got a mean? whiteboard upstairs that I, use, I, I should use it more. <laughs> I started out doing that, mm -hmm. but you're right. I need to implement it more um organization i think is 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 a big part of any business mm -hmm. that to be successful i think you got to be you got to be um organized it's not to a meticulous degree but just your day-to-day -day, mm -hmm. you should know mm -hmm. like and, and in the beginning and i've had other business ventures well it's gonna be a tr it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh a, a, a a snowballing effect yeah it's going to start off where it's not that meticulous yep. but as you start to get more and more into it yeah it becomes more and more meticulous you get more and more like it's 24 hours in a day mm -hmm. you need eight to sleep but check this out the eight is not it's not all in that same day like in a row like that it's not in the middle of the day you know what that eight is 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 from is from uh 4 a.m to 8 a.m pretty much right and then it's from that 4 a.m going back to whenever you went to sleep yeah. So it's just on the tail end of the day and the start of the day when ain't shit happening any fucking way. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. I mean, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We're different, you know what I mean? I mean, Kobe had a whole career with very little. <laughs> he so, didn't get eight hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. It's like, and again, that's having eight hours. You right. know what I mean? So, yeah. think about those that take six or, you know what I'm saying, the yeah. seven. You have that much more time in your day. And once you figure, okay, I have this much more time, how much time do I really need to, like, really eat breakfast? Oh man, I make breakfast. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, like, it's, like, it's, it's a whole hour dance. You know what I'm right. saying? To make fucking eggs and bacon. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But it's like, dude, if you really just sat there and just and just like really made it happen, you could have that shit done. Outside. Thinking about it is, is half the process. <laughs> Once make the decision and then Do execute. It. Yeah. Execute. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where the politics, the politics. The whole abracadabra yeah, comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where all that shit comes in at. It's just you like, make no, it up. Me, you making this shit up. <laughs> You're putting hella much on it. And yeah. it's just like, no, this, boom, yeah. boom, psh, done. Now, in the mix of doing that, if extras pop up, okay, cool. Yeah. But if you're that focused on getting the task done yeah. with those extras popping up, you can still get the task done within the time frame that you're planning to do it. Man, <laughs> it's so true, man. It's it's crazy. And, and, you, and this reminds me of an influencer that I, I follow. Every post he makes starts it out with, I feel good today. Well, he uses, I feel cute today. <laughs> he says, I feel cute today because I woke up. Now, see, we talked about consistency, right? Yeah. De delivering. You said he does what? You, you said he does what with what? With what post? Every post. Every post. He says the same thing. That's, Every post that's starts off the same way. Brand. Yeah. Yeah. You can make shirts out of that shit. And there you go. It's it's just, yeah, it's so true, man. It's it's mentality. It, it's it's um. These are these are challenges I faced when I was in my early twenties. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm in my mid thirties, like I'm thinking in hindsight, like I had a band that could have gone far, right? We were touring all over here, you know, um, prima for anyone who cares. But it was a, uh, I like when I was I was twenty two, twenty three. It's funny because we, we had a song we covered by um it was a rock band but we were covering a band uh Blink One Eighty Two they had a song called in uh, the lyrics was nobody uh likes you when you're twenty three oh wow <laughs> but it was funny because I was covering that and then I was twenty three touring and I'm like that's kind of funny because but those that mean the whole thing nobody likes you that was all my in my head like I was starting to believe that right because yeah we were getting local. Uh, attention like how you got local attention in East Oakland. Mm -hmm. I was getting that in in Citrus Heights, Sacramento area. We became a house band, all that. But the band dissipated, right? Long story short. Um, but I let that feel like the end, like the mm -hmm. end of you know what I mean. I I was young. Granted, I was young and I wasn't I wasn't broken in. I wasn't calloused yet, right? This is my first opportunity. It was my first band. We had a good manager. We had everything that uh, we needed to succeed. I just didn't still have it up here. But so now in my mid thirties, I look back, you know, and I don't regret anything, but, but and I'm still good friends with everybody in the band. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like everybody's married now and, and, and they have kids, but, um, but it's funny cause it's like, wow. Like I, I, I reached those same moments with this and I'm like, damn, that's all I had to do back then. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So it was just like, I'd, I'd obsess over the wrong, like I'd focus on the wrong things, the, the abracadabras. So I just didn't know that's what they, it was. Like, you know, and the other kids are younger than me in the band, right, so I'm right. the older one. They're so, following you. Yeah, so I'm like, damn, what do I do? Yeah. And my dad, like, he likes music, but he was like, we were practicing in his, in his house. You know, he was just a fan, right? right. But the business side, the that side the politic polytrix the mm -hmm. politics you know mm -hmm. i didn't i wasn't well versed yet but anyway um it, you learn from it man and, and i think everything happens for a reason i do believe in that um and what i wanted to uh wrap up on is something more light something more fun we talked about it yesterday <laughs> dame dollar man that, yeah, that's man. your boy. You, you ever met him? Or yes, no? I have. You have? Yes, yeah. I have. Uh, I met him twice. I met him when he was in college once uh, through a uh, colleague, Tiago Robinson, um, who knew him in high school. Uh, oh, wow. I actually taught at, I actually worked at the high school that Dame uh, graduated from. Mm. So I know, the, know his old high school coach and, you know, people that he worked with. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
He just uh, got booted, man. Unfortunately, man, we were both rooting for Portland. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I met him uh, uh, playing at Cal while he was at Weber State. I think right, right I think after his injury, before his injury, and then uh, I met him when he actually released his shoe at Oakland High School. His uh, I think it was like the Dame Three. Oh, yeah. uh, he did the release at Oakland High School, and they had a concert there. Um, yeah, it was dope. Shout out Dane for that concert. It was dope. It was it. Yeah, nice. I was backstage with my cousin, um, and uh, my cousin uh, uh, knows uh, Dane very well. And yeah, uh, yeah, it was cool just seeing him like in the gym, and like they, they had a whole thing for retiring his uh, his high school number or whatever back then. Yeah, so it was it was dope. It was dope. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, um, no, nah, man, them getting kicked out the playoffs. I mean. <sighs> Terry Stotts is gone. You know he they they let go of their coach. It was no it was no help. I, I think I sent you some stats the other day. Uh, I think it was like they had yeah they were they didn't have the same amount of people uh, same amount of players that were in double figures as um, Denver as Denver. They yeah. didn't have the same amount of players uh, with five or more rebounds as Denver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they had more turnovers. Denver had more points in the paint. Yeah. Um. You know what I mean? It was it was all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, man. One and I kind of and, and I started this conversation with a, with a uh, with a good friend in Texas uh, prior to me and you talking. Um, and one thing that I've said to him, and I'll say it to you, I just don't want Dame to be the Barry Sanders of the NBA. Oh, God, yeah, Barry Sanders, man. And this is no shade on. I'm looking dead to the camera. No shade on Barry. <laughs> like, dude, like. <laughs> You are the you are the god, like yeah. dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was an Emmitt Smith fan, and people gave me shit all day, like Emmitt Smith. But Barry Sanders way better. I'm like Emmitt Smith got rings, and it was just like, <laughs> yeah, that 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 girl's. Like, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I'm not a Cowboys fan. For everybody, my wife, me and her always, her and I always argue this. Grew up in Maryland, so uh, my uncle, diehard Washington fan. Okay, right, so. If you're a Washington fan, you're not a Cowboys fan. No, nah, it just not doesn't. At all. It's like Cowboy. oil and oil and vinegar. You, yeah, you straight don't, up. It don't <laughs> mix. Don't shake that shit up all day. I don't care. It's not. It's not coming out. I know. It's, yeah, we had fun with that. And the, all the Cowboys fans in Maryland. Oh, yeah. They, they. They. It wasn't good for them, man. And and then anyway, the idea is like you're saying with Emmett Smith. I, I feel that pain because yes. I I was on the Barry Sanders side. Just be, but just because. And I agree with you for the record, that chip solidifies everything. But but it was just because he was on the Cowboys. And and as a kid, I was Cowboys had a raw ass team. They just they did defense. Yeah. They had a good team. They had a solid defense. They had yeah. solid offense. I mean, you just, yeah yeah. They had Dion. You know what I'm saying? You that prime prime time. <laughs> that prime time, man. I know. You know what I'm saying? Michael Irvin. Like it was. Oh, they had a. They had they had that package that I really like. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, when yeah, it comes yeah. to like picking teams for like playing sports games or yeah. whatever. They had something I got you. They had something kinda in every everything. So I meaning I can hit you in any kind of way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got defense, I got some offense, you know what I mean? I'm not one sided, I'm not stuck in one in one area. So You you're 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 probably remember when Madden like ninety seven or Madden ninety ninety five was out and mm -hmm. they would and everybody was number eighty eight. Like we're, Dude, hey, yeah. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're old enough to remember when, <laughs> when everybody was 2D and everybody yep. was 88, yep. including the quarterback. <laughs> and it was you can do that little square run around and make them all follow you. <laughs> <laughs> Have a whole trail of people running around like, why you didn't score a touchdown yet? Like you can run the whole quarter. If you can do it right, you can <laughs> yeah. do the whole quarter like that and boop right before the oh, end. Oh my God. Yeah. But, but it was fun, man. Those games were fun. Like, I look back now and, like, I see them, the games today on, like, the Xbox, uh, the Series X game yeah. and all that. And it's like, damn. I'm going to get an Oculus. Oh. The one yeah. the headset. So, my cousin, my older cousin got oh, one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, that shit is The dope. VRs, right? That shit's dope. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. It's I, dope. I tried those. It's dope. Yeah. Those are cool. My friend has one, too. Yeah. They got, like, the newer version out, though, now. So, what's, what's, what's it's different? Just, it's like, I don't know. You're I, like, you literally are, like, somewhere else. I right? don't know. I need, that's why I need to go get one. <laughs> yeah. I need to go get one. <laughs> no, those are one. dope, man. Those are dope, for sure. Uh, but, so, Dame, we don't, we don't want... Dame to be like Barry, so nah, man. And is, I, you is, know, is that gonna happen in Portland though, or is he gonna have to go? I mean, Portland doesn't have the money like LA or you know, what I'm saying a New York or somebody else has the money now. New York, guys, not saying he won't go, yeah, yeah. you know, what I'm saying, but uh, they have the money, they have the money that yeah. he deserves. And it's not to say that Portland having hasn't given him the money that he deserves, 
but they have the money to support him with the cast yeah. that he deserves. And I take the Nets to, uh, for the best example mm. because, again, you have Harden, you have Kyrie, you know what I'm saying? You got uh, KD. Like, How do you feel about the Nets, K- though? They suck. <laughs> but it's just like, I'm come not- on, man. You put a like an all-star team together, right? Like, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Like, the Warriors were kind of like that a few no, years ago. No, 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 no. Okay, tell I'm me why. I'm pushing back. I'm pushing back Push on back. that. The reason why I'm pushing back, Steph Curry was already on the Warriors when they had Monte Ellis. They didn't give Steph Curry that platform like that. They didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't do him like that. That's fair. Right? Yeah. Mark Jackson went out and recruited and groomed those players to what they were. They okay. let Mark Jackson go. Yep. Steve Kerr steps in. Doesn't really change too much of shit. Yeah. They're still running the same platform that they was doing beforehand. Yeah. They just got better at it. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, they were yeah. more cohesive because they had been playing together and grew together. Yeah, chemistry. Chemistry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You didn't just, it, you didn't just go handpick the best players. It was a system and a formula that they built yep. and that they stuck with yep. while they were growing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So by the time they got to that age when they were wow. let go of yep. and Kerr came in, it was like, well, we already know what to do. Yeah. We're already here. Yeah. Like, let's go. And boom, that's what you that's what you see. I got you. You know oh. what I mean? Kurt, Kurt got that shine. Yep. You know what I mean? For Mark Jackson putting in I that know. background work. And t- like that tilling the field, planting the seeds, mm-hmm. watering them, and always oh, sprouting out. And like he did all of that. Kurt came and picked the fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But all that said, you don't want Dame going to Warriors. No, <laughs> I don't because they're in San Francisco. And I'm not from San Francisco. <laughs> That's true. I'm okay. from Oakland. Yeah. You know what I mean? Territories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Bri- and this is no this is no no disrespect to none of my Frisco partners or Frisco family or none of my people in Frisco. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, ci- the city people has none of my, you know what I'm saying? Nothing like that at all. But I got you. You know what I mean? <sighs> I'm from Oakland. I got to. Re- hey. I feel you, man. I got I, I to gotta have it a certain kind of way. I feel you. So Dame may be going... Not Portland though, because we don't think that's going to happen for him. He can't get. That I don't shit. want him to stay in Portland. Yeah. He's not going to get the support he needs in Portland, and uh-huh. that's just. I... McCollum is good, but man, he is. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and you know, no hate, no mellow, but Mello never got over the LeBron hump. Yeah, I know. He never got over the LeBron I know. hump. I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's People forget about that. Yeah. They came out about the same time. Of like, course. Yeah. And same draft. You. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. You had you had Wade CP uh, CP was this? I don't know if he was the same draft. No, but it was it was Wade, M- Mello, LeBron. Those are the, the three top guys. Wade is out. Owns the Utah Jazz now. You hear about that? He's a part owner of the Utah Jazz. Really? Yeah, Dwayne Wade. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. But anyway, wow. He was at the game when when uh, they they booted out the Memphis Grizzlies. Ah, oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't. Anyway, but makes sense. <laughs> I don't know how it makes sense. I figured he might want to invest in Miami, but I don't know. He went all the way to. Well, I mean. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Might Business have been a, idea. Be, yeah, might have been a better deal. It might have been. Might, might have been, been a better deal. But um, I don't know, man. I think Dan, I mean, I think Clippers, like you said, might be in the in the runs for, for him. Um, And then if and the Clippers are getting game seven on tomorrow. So. Mm-hmm. We'll see, man. I like Dame. I like him a lot, and uh, not because uh, I think he he uh, shows something bigger than basketball. He's still like he stays himself through it all, right? That's that's town business. That's town shit, man. That's how we do. We, <laughs> yeah, we can't. We we do not like to be fake. Yeah, that's like, what I like about him. We that's, do we do not like to be fake. And he doesn't have to talk for we, me to no. Nope, we got We have to do all of that. Yeah, we have to do none of that. It's we, on him. It's we, on him. You yep, feel it. Yeah. I saw him doing the doing the the bay dance like in one of the games <laughs> in the middle of the game. I, I saw that it was on a sports center. I'm telling you, man. I mean, <laughs> look at look at Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, you're right. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. You're right. I'm just man. here so I don't get fined. Like. It's true. And it didn't stop nothing. He's still exactly who he is. When you see him on the Ruffles commercials, when you see him, you know what I'm saying, with the potato chips or whatever, Yeah, he's still the same dude. Yeah. Same dude. I saw Marshawn in, uh, in Berkeley. He, he was, he was uh, at, at a, it was like a sandwich shop. I can't mm-hmm. remember the name. But he was endorsing him, and then he was there, and, and like me and my friends were walking like, like holy shit, it's Marshawn. But he was, you're right. He was himself. Like what I saw on TV is what I saw there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you're right. That's true. 
Something about Oakland, East Oakland. <laughs> Something about all of Oakland. All of Oakland. I can yeah. only speak on East Oakland because that's where I grew up. Yeah, you know man. what I mean? Uh, I stayed in the North for a little while just because we used to had to, we had to stay with my grandmother for a few years. For sure. Um, but nah, man. Um, the North is the North has their way about pride, and you know, same thing with West Oakland, where my parents are from. Yeah. You know what I mean? They have a whole kind of system, a system in a way for their pride. So yeah, um, it's just something that's passed down. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's. It generates throughout everyone in Oakland because again, there's an authenticity that we're not gonna we're not gonna fake, and we're not gonna allow somebody else to fake. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, um, you smell it, dude. It's <laughs> like you, like you know it. Like it's just yeah. like yeah, like I know, like I know you real. I know you from like I yeah, got you. it's that kind of thing. I got you, man. Yeah. Well, that's uh, you know, we can only hope more people were real like that, right? Because because a lot of problems wouldn't be problems if if we if we were all uh, just more honest, sure. but, um, Hey man, anything you want to plug, uh, any, any plans coming up here? Uh, uh, plugs. Um, absolutely, man. Uh, shout out to Oakland zone. Shout out to, uh, duct tape clothing. Um, mm. man, shout out to Ohio's boys and girls basketball. Um, shout out to AAMA King makers of Oakland, man. Shout out to my block six, 800 Bancroft. You know what I'm saying? Haven score Kings. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to all the East Oakland man, all the West Oakland man. Shout out to everybody that know me, everybody that love me, and I love them back. And it's pretty much how it is. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Hey, I appreciate you coming on. Um, you got father duties, I know that. So <laughs> yeah, you might be up from that nap. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Thanks everyone for uh, uh, jumping on. This is episode fifteen. My good friend Ern. Um, and we're going to have a block party for you and my oh, wife. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. coming up, yeah. man. Block party's coming up. <laughs> OVO might be, birthdays. Might be special footage. Special, special footage. footage. There you go. You That's heard it here. <laughs> Thank you, man. All Appreciate right. it. As always, subscribe, like, and follow Fumble Podcast on YouTube and your podcast platform of choice. Thank you again for listening, and I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.